What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering the Ponziani opening and specifically how to fight against the Janish counterattack. The Ponziani starts off with the moves e4, and after e5, we have knight f3, knight c6, and now white resorts to the rare and off-key move c3 with the Ponziani, a very underrated opening looking to support this d4 push. And now black has the opportunity to play knight f6 with the Janish counterattack, putting some pressure on our centralized pawn, but we're not going to play passively defending the pawn with a move like d3 or bishop to d3 or queen e2, but instead aggressively fight for the center of the board with d4. And if black takes the pawn on e4, go with d5 attacking the knight on c6. Now in a previous video, we went over the move knight e7, but recently I found that black has a very interesting response to d5 with bishop c5 the Vukovic Gambit, looking to put pressure on this F2 pawn, and I can totally see why many Pondiani players are afraid and worried about this move, bishop c5. I mean, black's only giving up a knight, and in return, can take our F2 pawn with either the knight or the bishop, and both the king on e1 and the rook on h1 are both very vulnerable. But guys, we have nothing to fear. In this video, I'm going to break down the best lines and variations for white to play so that you're ready for whatever comes your way coming out of this gambit. And here we're not going to play a move like bishop to e3 because against this, black can simply take the bishop, continue with knight e7, and I think that black has a better game there. So instead, we're actually going to take the knight on c6. And now black really has two options. The first, taking with the knight on f2, and the second, taking with the bishop. Let's go over both. First, we have knight takes f2, and I actually think that this is a mistake, but in either case, taking with the knight or the bishop, we're going to play queen d5, currently attacking the bishop on c5 and also attacking the pawn on b7. And the obvious question is why doesn't black just take the rook on h1? Well, here white is clearly winning after queen takes c5, and I know that some of you are probably wondering how on earth is white winning this game? I mean, right now black is ahead of point in material, but the whole idea is that we're putting pressure on e5, and at the same time, this knight on h1 is trapped. Whenever we get the opportunity, we could play a move like g3 followed by bishop g2, trap that knight, win the knight for only a pawn, and we're simply going to have a winning endgame. And here, if black decides to attack our queen on c5 while defending the pawn on e5 with a move like d6, we could play queen g1, and I still think that white is winning there. We're now going to win this knight, but instead I think the best move is c takes b7, an amazing idea. If d takes d5, we're about to make another queen on a8, and if bishop takes b7, we have queen b5 with check attacking the king and attacking the bishop. And following queen d7, we can take that bishop, play queen a6. We're going to continue to play natural developmental chess, get our bishop into the game, get our knight, play a move like g3 and bishop g2. We're already ahead two points of material. We're about to win two more points, meaning that black is going to give up a full minor piece for only a pawn, and white is clearly winning this game. So knight takes h1 is obviously not the answer for black because we can simply take the bishop. What about the move queen e7? I think that this is by far black's best option, but even then, after c takes b7, I think that white is clearly winning. We're attacking the rook on a8 and attacking the bishop on c8. And here I'm going to show you black playing perfectly, and I still think that white is going to have the better end game. After bishop takes b7, we're going to take that bishop, and black can't take the rook on h1 because we would take the rook on a8. Black right now is behind four points in material, so the best move is castling kingside, defending the rook while still attacking ours. But now we have the opportunity to play rook g1, and if a move like queen d6 threatening mate in one, there's nothing to fear. We're simply going to play knight bd2, followed by bishop e2, and if a move like e4 is played, we can now play knight c4 attacking the queen, and queen d1 is no longer an option because of our bishop on e2. Again, guys, a key idea, put your knight on d2 and put your bishop on e2. And here, if a move like knight d3, we can play king d2. Amazing idea, putting our king out into the open. Usually, black could move this knight and checkmate our king very quickly, but the queen is currently attacked. And if a move like queen e6, we can simply continue with taking the knight. And after bishop takes g1, take on e4, exchange off the board, and here, after rook takes e4, we play knight takes g1, and following rook takes c4, we're going to continue with king d5 attacking the rook. And you see here, 
after d5, we're sitting at even material, but we have two minor pieces for a rook and a pawn. And my rule of thumb is that two minor pieces are almost always much better than just a rook and a pawn. We're going to continue with bishop e3, putting some pressure on that a7 pawn and really controlling the dark squares on d4 and c5. And if a move like rook e4, we can play knight f3, we're still putting some pressure on this a7 pawn. So black will probably play a move like a5, but now we can play bishop c5, activating the bishop. Again here, we're sitting at even material, but I think that white just has too much firepower with both of these minor pieces. If black decides to play something crazy like rook to e8, looking to put the other rook on e2 and gobble up our pawns, we're completely okay. We're gonna play a4, and after rook e2, they can have this pawn. We're okay with that. We're gonna play b4, and after a takes b4, take back with the c pawn, and our a pawn is about to get running. After rook takes g2, we're gonna push with a5, followed by a6, and if black, in turn, plays moves like g5 and g4 attacking the knight, which is black's best option, we can simply play knight h4. And yes, after rook takes h2, now black is ahead two points of material, but after knight f5, white is clearly winning. We're two steps away from promotion, and after a move like rook e8, we're simply going to play knight e7 check, play knight takes d5, a7, and knight takes c7 are coming quickly. Black's going to have to give up a rook for only a pawn. We're then going to push our b pawn up the board, and white has a one game. Again, this is black playing nearly perfectly for 30 straight moves. There's just no way with perfect play from white that black can get out of this variation with any chance of survival. As we just covered, knight takes f2 is not the best option for black because we have queen d5 attacking the bishop and the pawn on b7. What about the move bishop takes f2? Well, I think that this is by far the best option for black, checking our king on e1. But we're now going to play king e2 and hand black a big decision to make. Does black want to play the main line with b takes c6, simply taking a pawn off the board? Does black want to play a move like bishop b6, getting the bishop out of the line of fire? and opening up the f2 square for the knight? Or does black want to play a move like d5, looking to really solidify the positioning of the knight on e4? This d5 move at first may seem very good, but I actually think that it's a mistake because we can play c takes b7, and after bishop takes b7, play the Ponziani-like move, queen a4, but now with check, attacking the king, and after c6, play knight d2, really looking to undermine this knight on e4, and this knight can't run away because we take the bishop. So after a move like queen b6, defending the bishop, and also threatening potentially queen e3 with check, we can now just take the knight off the board, and queen e3 is no longer possible because of our bishop on c1. And after d takes e4 and queen takes e4, it may seem as if black has a huge attacking advantage after castling queen side, but now we can play knight d2. And I think that white is clearly better, currently threatening queen f5 with check, attacking the king, and winning the bishop on f2. And if black plays a move like bishop a6 with check, this may seem really intimidating, but after king d1, we're completely fine. We're now attacking the bishop on a6. And if a move like g6, stopping this queen f5 idea, we can now take the bishop on a6, play queen e2, attacking the queen on a6 and the bishop on f2. If black takes the queen, we can take back and we're up material and we're going to go on to win this game. And if black decides to hold on with queen b6, trying to keep some kind of attacking chances against our king on d1, we're simply going to play king c2. We're ahead two points in material. We can play rook f1, attacking the bishop, bring our knight to e4 or c4 get our dark scored bishop involved in this game and there's just no way that with good play white is going to go on to not win this game so as tempting and aggressive as it looks d5 is really not the best option for black what about the move bishop b6 i actually like this move for black and i think that it gives black a fighting chance getting the bishop out of the line of fire putting less pressure on this knight and also opening up the f2 square, but we're still okay. We're now going to play queen d5, attacking the knight on e4 and the pawn on b7, and if a move like knight f2, we could play c takes b7, but I personally think that rook g1 is the better option, idea being after b takes c6, the e5 pawn is now under fire, and after this, we're attacking the king on e8, and if a move like king f8, we're going to continue with knight d4, now threatening the knight on f2 with our king. And this knight really can't go anywhere except for the square g5. 
in which case we're going to play queen f4, attacking the knight, defending the pawn on h2, and also putting pressure on this f7 pawn. And I personally think that a move like c5 or h5 is probably black's best options, in which case I still think white is better. But there was a master game in which black played d5, advancing the pawn and defending the knight on g4 with the bishop. And here white continued with king d1. And after c5, played knight f3. And white still went on to win this game, but I really don't like this knight f3 move. I think better is the move knight c6, attacking the queen on d8. And after a move like queen d7, playing bishop b5, defending the knight, and also eyeing the queen on d7. And black might be tempted to play a move like bishop b7, attacking the knight with both the bishop and the queen. But now after knight e5, white is clearly winning. We're attacking the queen with both our bishop and our knight. And if a move like queen e6, we simply win a piece. And if black takes the bishop, we have queen takes f7 checkmate game over. And guys, the last move that we're going to cover is b takes c6, which has been played 16 times at the master and grandmaster level. Here white is going to continue with queen a4, a very Ponziani-like move, attacking the knight on e4. And d5 can't be played because we'd simply take the pawn on c6. So after f5, we play knight bd2. Keep in mind, this knight can't run away to say f6 because we'd simply take the bishop off the board. So after castle and kingside, we can take that knight, take it with the queen. And if d5, I actually find this a very interesting opening theory variation. We're going to take the pawn on e5. In fact, this is the only move that gives white an advantage. I know some of you are probably thinking, how on earth could we ever play this move? I mean, rook e8 literally pins the queen to the king on e2. Well, we're more than prepared for this. In fact, we're going to give up our queen by playing queen takes e8 and then taking the bishop on f2. Yes, we're down a queen, but we're ahead a bishop, a rook, and two pawns. And with perfect play from black, playing queen e4, black can get the pawn back. Because after bishop e2, defending the knight, black can play bishop g4. Idea being after rook e1, black can take the knight. We take back with the bishop, and now this queen h4 idea attacking the king. King g1 can't be played because of queen takes e1 game over. So we now play king f1, and black gets the pawn back. So we're now sitting at even material, but I think that white is clearly better. And when I plug this into a computer program, it shows white with the advantage. Black has a queen, but we're ahead a rook, a bishop, and a pawn. And this bishop in particular is attacking the s7 pawn and really controlling the dark squares on d4 and c5 let's say black plays a move like a5 getting the pawn out of the line of fire we're now going to continue with rook a d1 and black has to be very careful here i mean queen h1 really doesn't do anything because we just play king e2 and the queen is under attack all of a sudden and if a move like rook f8 now we play bishop c5 attacking the rook and if a move like rook f5 we continue with rook e8 check rook e7 check and if king g8 we form a battery ram on the e-file with both of our rooks and after h5 continue with bishop d4 there's just so much firepower here from white the bishop and the rook attacking the pawn on g7 we're also attacking the pawn on c7 which is currently defended by the queen on h2 queen h1 again doesn't really do much but hurt black and the same goes with rook takes f3 here i would give white the clear edge in this end game if you'd like to learn more on the theory behind the Ponziani opening, click the video to the left. If you'd like to explore more chess openings in general, click the playlist to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.